and select officers. Take over. <laughs> okay. Well, welcome everybody. Happy New Year. So um, don't mind the mop. And uh, what we need to do now is go through the annual election of officers. So I'm going to call first for nominations for chair. I would like to nominate Kathy Brown. I, I'll second that. <laughs> who, who, who said that first? Was that you, Donna? Yeah. Okay. Come on, any, anybody else? Are there any, before you can second one, I'm gonna, uh, hang on, we have to, uh, anybody else? Anybody interested in being chair? One of the nominating chair? Hearing none, do I have a second for Kathy Brown? Warren? I second it, yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Well, you know, boards do better with new leadership sometimes. Okay. So. Sometimes. Right. So move. <laughs> Kathy is chair again. Thanks, board. Okay. Do I have any nominations for the position of vice chair? I nominate Deb McComas. I second. No, you can't second. We're just taking oh, nominations. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Any other nominations for vice chair? Going once, going twice. Okay, do I have a second for Deb McComas? Yep. Yep, I second. Wait, who was second? Who said that? We'll give it to Chris. Or either of yep. us. <laughs> okay. I have, a, for, I have a motion and a second. All in favor for Deb McComas? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, moving on to everybody's favorite spot on the Thank board, you. secretary. I Do nominate I have, Donna. <laughs> Do I have, okay, Can I nominations say let's close for, nominations? What's that? Can I say let's close nominations? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you can't yet. Um, so I have a nomination for Donna. Any other nominations? Donna, are you willing to accept again? Yes, I am. Okay, do I have a second, please? I'll second. Andrew. That was Andrew. Yep, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, our 2021 slate of officers is Kathy Brown Chair, Deb McComas Vice Chair, and Donna Corthorne Secretary. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Kathy, Madam Chairman. I'm turning the meeting back over to you. All righty, thanks. Um, Donna, you just you just do such a great job with the minutes. Thank you. Keep us all back in line, and we can go back when yeah. when I forget things. Boom, there it is, written down. So thank you very much. So, all, all in favor? <laughs> um, how many of you read the minutes from the last meeting? Did everybody read? It? Yes. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve those minutes? I'll motion to approve the minutes. All right. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right. Um, all in favor of approving the meeting notes from November 2nd, say aye. Uh, yeah. Aye. We're all good. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. You know, it's so nice to see people. Mm hmm I know. You know, isn't it? It's I, I look forward to this meeting. So thanks, you all. Um, well, thank you for being president again. Well, because um, you do an amazing job. Yeah, I'm feeling bubbly. Uh, <laughs> Good well, I want you all. Oh, look at that. Boob, yeah, Buble. I, I see him. Buble. Yeah, raspberry buble today. I want you all to know that anytime anybody wants to um, depose you. <laughs> welcome you know that's yes so so all right but let's get in get out because uh, that, that's why we're here um no correspondence no member inquiries no incident reports which is always very very good um projects and events um we don't have anything scheduled but i would like us to maybe start all thinking of a project, a monthly event, something that we could do 
between the beginning of the year and FIDO float. Whether it be um, a, a monthly activity at the dog park, like, like agility or, Karen, are we gonna do the lure? Can we do that lure coursing? I have, I have a uh, inquiry out to Diane who runs that. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back from her whether lure coursing will be moving forward. Um, with agility maybe, um, but it would be something that we as a board would have to take on. Um, we as a board would have to want to do it and make it available and also provide the backup for it. You know, if it's a, a Saturday morning activity, something that we would be willing to take a turn being there as a board member to sponsor. So um, if you want to think about that, if you want to discuss that now, could, does anybody have any any ideas? Do you want to come back next month with that? What do you, um, or making, just the idea to begin with? How about making a connection with the various rescue groups and inviting each month um, a, a, an adoption day? Good idea. Okay. Yeah, I think that is good. Um, uh, okay. A meet and greet. I should say a meet and greet. A meet and greet. Whatever, right. yeah, whatever sure. their going term is. Because um, there's there's a lot of well-knowns um, and there's a lot of uh, very nice rescues out there that, that are smaller, working hard, people may not be aware of. Yeah, I think that's good great. idea. Yep. That's a good one. Um, I, I agree. Good idea. Anything else? Do we want to dive into that? Does anybody want to take that on, kind of look into that and see? Um, I mean, my question right off the bat would be um, where at the dog park? Probably outside. It depends on the season. <laughs> and, uh, and we'd have to talk to the rescue. I think we'd have to find out from the rescues where they stand with all their rescue dogs and, but it could be something that could be set up outside. Or it could be something if we, if we went in this direction, it could be something where the rescue dogs are <laughs> only under the roof of the pavilion. They went no further. So, so right off the bat here, here are questions we need to, to right. discuss. Is anybody interested in looking into this? Anybody? Um, Say like Ferris Bueller. Anybody? Anybody? Um, there be a. I think maybe developing a checklist. Like you, there's some good points just brought up, and, and what do we need to consider? Location. Who can we contact? Right. What age? Contact is list. Yeah, and, and names of the uh, adoption <laughs> age, home at last, and that wags are the only two I'm really familiar with. Yeah, there's Tiny Miracles, Last Chance Ranch, um, Wags. I would be willing to reach out to those organizations. If, um, if Kathy, I mean, if Karen, if you can give me the information of who to contact and what to ask them. Yeah, I don't know that I have all the contacts. I think that's what we have to do I'll, is kind I'll of uh, I'll work with develop you. the contacts. Yeah. I have some that I can probably pull out. And I was done from looking for a puppy the last six months, well, four months. <laughs> And I would be happy to help out too if we want to kind of get together a little subcommittee to, um, just because I have been approved foster in a couple local agencies going through our process as well. So I'd be happy to, to help out. Great. Okay. Awesome. So, so then let's, um, Donna, will you send out an email and, and I'll, I'll get involved in Kristen as well. And then, and then we can figure out a time to talk and look into this. Yeah, that would be interesting okay. too, a session on fostering, but they all have such different rules and requirements. It's a... and okay, it, so who should I be sending the email to? To Kathy Brown, to Kathy and to Kristen. Okay. Anybody else? I mean, not that we're excluding anybody else. <laughs> nope. Okay. You can copy me, then I'll just have the, I'll just make a file. Okay. 
but I don't want to, I'll let you guys do what you do. Okay, awesome. Uh, see, and I like, so that we're, we're off to, um, it will get more people out to the park. It will provide a service to, to dog people. I like that. I think that's a great idea. Um, anything else? Do we want to just start on that and then see, you know, if something else rolls out from that, but do one thing at a time. Are we good with that? I'd start on that. Is there an issue with having them under the pavilion? I think that's a good idea to have them under think, the pavilion. Yeah. I think well, you I should think. talk it out and just kind of you know, go weigh the pros and cons. It could make it difficult for people just wanting to use the park that day to get in to it their would, enclosure. I mean, the, the downside is it's going to make it almost impossibly hard for people who want to use the park mm -hmm. to actually weed out the members from the want to be a member or might want to be a member and want to try it out and have a dog that's non-vaccinated and that would be a some of them are some of them aren't it, it all depends where they are but i think maybe even if we use the rotate depending upon the time of year the season the, if we use the rotation area that's always a possibility for safety for yeah. the rescue dogs and a chance to meet them know. so those those are things chris and donna that, that we need to look into because i don't know what the if you have a eight week eight week old puppy that cannot right. be vaccinated yet um, right. and is in the rotation area and comes up with parvo, um, right. what is the window of infection there? I mean, so I mean, there are things. Right. We need. I don't think I think this can work. Yeah. I think, I think we, we just need to work through it. So. I think if yeah. we rotate around one rescue at a time, whether it's a month, every other week, or, you know, whatever it is for a season, whether it's a year, all year long, um, then they'll know where they're, where, what their dogs have and don't have. I think it's, we try to mix rescues and their dogs. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't do yeah. that. No, yeah, but I think if it's just one and we had a rotation, we could probably get, um, I'll talk to Chris. We could probably have a, a canopy available or something that could be transported just for shade. Right. I mean, they're pretty good. I think, I think, I think it's just a brainstorming of. Say that again, Warren. What? Well, I've, I've gone when we were looking for dogs. We went to several of those meet and greets, and they they're pretty restrictive with those dogs, especially the puppies. They won't let you touch them. They put them. They they cage them off, you know, mm -hmm. pen for them, and things like that. And the people that are fostering usually keep their dog on a leash if it's a bigger dog. So, I mean, I, I think you could put it in the pavilion if you wanted to and still have access to the park. Mm -hmm. Just <laughs> but the puppies especially. Here's another thought too. Does it have to be at the dog park? I well, think it's publicity for us if it's at yeah. the park. I yeah, it does. But thinking, uh, it's would, for the members, but I mean, you may not get, well, the yeah, problem, I mean, the only other problem with having it at the dog park is you're going to have too many people who want to drive down the service road parking. cavalierly like it's, you know, the Indy 500 and who may not know where to park and how to walk to get to the event. So and that's where signs come in. Mm. I mean, we can work through that. Can read. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would, I yeah. would prefer to make it work at the dog park as opposed to figure out reasons not to have it. At right. The, I mean, and Kathy, once a month would be good uh, because there's not a lot of rescues out there that you need once a week or every other week, right? We want it to be something special, not, okay, it's, it's Saturday, another one is there. Same old, same old. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe each, each time it comes around, there's also a food drive or toy drive or whatever drive that the rescue needs from our members. Well, we could put yeah. that out here. Yeah. Well, okay. a lot of times they'll do at these um, events, they'll collect donations for that agency. So they'll collect towels and blankets and right. things like that. We've done um, a ton of donations with WAGS Rescue. That's where we got Miko um, from. And they often are collecting all sorts of stuff for that particular rescue. That sounds that good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe that day we could have a donation barrel or. Okay. All right, and that can we can just work in on that. I, and I like the monthly, you know, we don't want to overkill. So, all right. It, but, it might be good to reach out to one, like Kristen, if you have a contact, or Kathy from yours, just to see 
they usually do them at pet stores and like in town when there's events going on where <laughs> dog parks kind of off the beaten path. They may not be that interested. I mean, so I think it's a good idea, but they may see it as not drawing unless we're going to have right. it, things like uh, that. Okay. Right. Now, so you may want to, before you put too much work into it, make sure that they see it as a viable option and what they may see because it's over there where there's, there's nothing there. So right. It's coming in to, to go to the giant and say, hey, they're having, you know, meet and greet at the pet store right down. Right. We could always set it. So that's why I asked. We could set something up at the pavilion, and then they have yeah. she. We can coordinate it off. And the yeah. dog park. Maybe you won't physically see the dog park, but you'll meet the dog park members that have information, and might be a little yeah. further outreach. Um, there's, yeah. a, I mean, there's just it's kind of an endless thought process of like, or th number of thoughts and ideas. It's just throwing them on the wall and seeing what sticks. Yeah. And it all depends on. When you can all get out and about too. Right. Sure oh, yeah. yeah, many of them sure. right now aren't doing group meet and greets. They're right. doing kind of personal on That's their true. own, you know, yeah. COVID thing. I, so, which is a good thing for us because it buys us some time. Mm -hmm. um, I do think the dog park would be a great location. The uh, WAGS typically does theirs at Horsham Vet. And if you've ever been to that um, meet and greet, it's just the veterinary hospital. Um, there's no other attractions there and they right. I mean it's it's a little crazy and it's a little insane I personally love the idea of this outside meet and greet I think the dogs are so much calmer I think you can connect with them so much more than than that so they might be interested could be a good I, I, I think it gets and and I know people like uh, walk-ins I guess but I mean like we didn't get to meet boo until we picked her up because yeah. of Maybe you, you know, can do a Zoom nice. meet and greet. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, we did see, but but Chris, and I'm with you. And it also gets people there who are interested in adopting as opposed to somebody walking by a building. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, Comes at Nancy. the park. Okay, so, so that's a good thing. Um, all yeah, right. Maybe, maybe there's such a thing as a Zoom meet and greet that while we're in this, if that might help some of the rescues that we could log on and meet the furry friends. I, I, I like I like at the dog park. I like that we, and Kristen, maybe since we both rescued from WAGs, we could reach out to them first just to see, or last, home at last, right? Isn't, mm -hmm. so, there's home, yeah, there's home at last, home again. We have tiny miracles, Lulu's. Uh, yeah. Almost, uh, almost home is where we got Mickey. Um, there's Salfid Rescue. Um, there's another rescue that's kind of interesting, and I don't know a ton about them. It's a Stray Rescue Network, and what their main focus is on is bringing mama dogs up here. So they yeah. often have a ton of uh, litters and and babies, and um, that's kind of their their niche that they kind of focus in on, which is kind of cool. Um, hmm. But so I do have some contacts and I am approved fosters with some of them. So I'd be happy to, to reach out to those guys. Awesome. Awesome. There's also the SPCA, we shouldn't forget. <laughs> I'm, I'm on Google right now and there's a ton in, well, there's a ton listed here, but they're not all in the area, somewhere in like Philly or Quakertown. So well, I think- we, Yeah, last, well, there are a lot of people move around. Last Chance Ranch is in Quakertown. There's yeah. um, something lab rescue. Brookline, um, that's where Brookline, Jake Brookline, Brookline, yep. And uh, I, I, Lulu's. Kristen, and... I, I really think between <laughs> you and Warren, and you know, I reached out to three or four as well. We can start local right. and move from there. So, so that's awesome. Nancy, you joined. What we're going to do is um, work on having a monthly rescue event at the dog park once a month um once we can do that but we're going to start working on it now as kind of an, a project or event community service bring people to the dog park etc so that's what we're talking about right now that sounds fantastic um what would would the dogs be running around in the park and then you can just no, no no absolutely no. not Okay. <laughs> yeah, think of it as a meet and greet type of okay, thing. Okay, uh, just a meet and greet and see the dogs and uh, yeah, okay. the, the, uh, the shots will be all over the map. 
Yeah, and give people more a little more space than, as Kristen was saying, like at a vet's office, or a right. little more space than out front at um, Pets Plus, or out so so. Or Valley Square, where I got my dog. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So yeah. So, so um, on a side note, since everybody's a dog lover and everybody knows Margaret, if you're inclined to just send her a, a nice note, she just uh, recent, right before the holidays lost to um, Betty. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, thanks. All righty. So, um, and then Donna will send out an email and then we'll, we'll get moving on that. I'm, that's, that's cool. Um, all right, business, the... If you all remember, we're not doing the video, we're doing the, um, the help me out here, you all, PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and you know what, I want you all to look at that. I'll send that out this week so that you can, I don't know if I was gonna send it to Ed, I don't know if, if I can send everything, but at least I'll send the PowerPoint side of it so you can see the, the flow of that. Um, I checked with Caitlin on the survey, Caitlin Finley and Kristen, have you heard anything on the survey? I, the last communication and I looked back on that cause I always look at the notes and like, what was I supposed to do? And it was so far back. Um, the last communication was back in November um, and it was just kind of like, this looks good. Um, I think we're ready that we're ready to go with the way it looks, but that was the last communication. And then it kind of flew off of my radar and I, and I apologize, but I did not follow up after that. Well, and I reached out, um, and I wanted to see what Caitlin had to say. Um, so Caitlin on November 5th sent out the email and the link to the members, mm -hmm. but the response would have gone back to Caitlin Steck. Yeah, and we haven't heard from her. So, so Kristen, could you shoot her an email and see if she's heard anything? Yeah, that's no problem. Okay, and and we may need to do a a plan B on that as far as. Um, do we send it out again? Um, I would love just to send it out again, especially since we were closed for two weeks to see if that, you know, would stimulate a better, uh, more of a response. Sure. Um, so, so that um, weather conditions, closures, I wanted your opinion. What do you think as far as, I mean, not that we can really change things because Chris is out there doing his best to keep the dog park open. Um, we were closed for two weeks. Yep, a little, just a, I think a day longer. Um, were any of you out there before we closed? Not me. No, but I heard I heard the reviews of how absolutely soggy it is. Like Denise said, she had knee high boots and she had mud up above her boots just uh, from walking. When we went out to it, it was just. And the thing is, is you know we could probably run drains. I mean, maybe if we ran twenty drains throughout all of that. You know, if we wanted to do that, let's move the dog park. I mean, it would, you know, cost wise. So it, it's, it was the rain, the snow, again, to have four acres is not prime real estate. So, you know, it's not built on the best soil. It's not, but we did what we had to do. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, Kathy, I would, I just think it's always good to remind people it's also the safety for the dogs because I think I had either shared it with you or Karen. I was out there right before my dog was running with another dog and they just wiped out because of the mud because it was so slippery. Right. So and it's I, a safety issue too. Yeah, it is. Not I think you're right, Nancy. You're right. And I think we crafted the sign that way 
right. um, for, for both you know, the ability to maintain the facility, the safety of all the dogs and our members. And, uh, and, and really you, you do it, you do it when it's happening or you're going to be closed for a, a, a tremendously extended period of time as we try to reseed and go forward. And we've always said from the beginning that there may be times due to maintenance or weather that it may have to close. I, I did get a couple phone calls that my dog doesn't ride mine playing in the mud, but, um, or digging holes. We get them all the time, but they're the few, not the many. Do people ask for um, any kind of financial no. relief? Okay. No, and would, we wouldn't do that if it's something. Not. Yeah, no, if it's it, they, they, they may, but usually at times when we've been closed for extended period of times beyond you know uh, reasonable control, what we've done is push. Um, we might push their renewal forward, but not for just regular maintenance. I mean, I, I always tell everybody if you're joining a dog park, if you're joining anything outside, you really need to kind of wrap your head around. It's like it's like 10 months total when things have to go up and down and in and out, whether it's sports or dog parks or whatever it is. And when I, when I phrase it that way to the people, they seem to, to understand it. And, Thank you. And we all know Certainly. that at orientation isn't always remembered, but that will be emphasized as far as if it's closed, it's closed. And Nancy, as you said, for the safety of the dogs and the safety of the members. <coughs> And that, you know, in a 10 month period, if it's closed for a month, that's what it is. It's not, we do our best. And I always praise Chris and Greg and the guys for doing such a good job. But there are times where we can't control mother nature and I will let people know that. I also think that, and Karen and I talked about this, that in the application we put somewhere that you know, it's, it's there where they sign off that they understand that due to weather, it will be closed and it could be closed for, you know, an unspecified amount of time. And it's, it's due to weather. So. I yeah. certainly think that's a great idea. I think putting it in the application would be a lovely idea because it would then it, it optimally it would preclude having so much pushback from so many people, you know, giving us a hard time over the fact that we want the best for the dogs and the facility and the whole bit. It's in the book, but, but it's, in what, there, right? it's in the, it's Sorry. in the manual, but I think what we'll do is there's the sign off. We call it the sign off page where we kind of re go, you know, we thought probably there's just a few things We're going to follow the rules, We're going to be respectful. Um, understand the park will be closed. It's just a, you know, a, a couple check boxes. And then uh, it's kind of like, here's the reminder of the specifics. It's a, yeah. a really good place because yeah. then you're signing. Everybody agree on that one? Yeah, I think that's yeah. a great idea. So consensus on that. Right. That's also the page that everybody has to so re-sign when they re-up. when they re -up. Good idea to put it there. Yeah, good, good, okay. Um, I talked with Chris today as far as improvements in maintenance goes. And um, because I said, Chris, can you think of, of anything that that you think we need to focus on right now? And what he, he said, let's get through the winter. <laughs> and, and he said, you know, we can't do anything right now. Let's see what ends up being you know, through January or February, the major problems. We as a board have already talked about addressing the insects and addressing things like that. So we've got that covered. Um, what he, what we as members, and now I'm happy to say that, you know, and, and we can all laugh next month when I come back and say, oh gosh, you all, there's some idiots out there. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been out there, you know, very much, but I will be, but, and shoot, I am being recorded. But anyway, um, <laughs> there'll be some gap in the tape. I'm going to, I'm going to make a piece of paper that says recording, recording. <laughs> but, but my, my point is that we as members, and now I include myself, can tell people move away from the mud. 
I mean, that was the big thing when Denise and Denise's husband and Chris and Greg, and when we went out there, the idea was to steer people away from the mud. Well, when Chris went out today, he found that all the dog bowls are still right where the most mud for the large dog <laughs> area is. He moved them out. So, you know, if, if we can, as members, remind people to move to the dry area and get them to walk a little bit and oh, good. try to <laughs> preserve the mud so that it can dry out before it's destroyed. Well, uh, if, it, if it just continues, if it continues to be this unbelievably soggy, Kathy, we're going to have to think about closing it again because if people are after you all went out there and laid out a walkway to go to a drier area and you made a point to put water jugs at a drier area and you made a point and if people are not going to go with that then obviously we need to consider closing it again just to preserve the freaking turf well and and keep the animals safe I mean, right that's the other you know, the, the dogs. Mm -hmm. I, I do go to the dog park a lot. I haven't been there since it was closed, but I don't think people are intentionally going in the water in the mess because most people, you know, I wear my uh, boots that go up to my shins. I would, I would say usually the, the dogs end up chasing each other and end up in the mud. And the people that go there don't want that because that means they're going to take their dog to be washed. So mm -hmm. I just think that we do the drainage issue is the drainage issue. So I just, you know, and I, I don't think people, this is just my opinion. I don't think people touch the dishes and the bowls. I think they're really like mindful. They think that someone has put them there by the township and there's, there's this like special magic of why they're sitting where they're, where they are. So I, those are just, I bring my own water jug, like literally a cooler. I have my dog drink out of it, but I noticed People don't touch or move anything. They're very respectful of whoever things were left. Yeah. That's just well, been my observation. So Nathan, it will be it will be interesting to see if I mean because the benches are still where they were where we moved them last week. All the dog bowls were moved back out to the dry space. So it will be interesting to see if they stay there. Which and I and I hope you are I, I hope that's the case you know that that people do move out there and it's when we went out there it wasn't for the dogs it was to get the people to stand elsewhere therefore yeah. the dogs would run elsewhere does that make sense yeah there's a yeah when you go in the large dark park uh the where it is now they would go in and to the left because that was the driest highest spot and that's where i saw a lot of people standing and then they would walk up to the little pavilion and back. But the rest of it is yeah. like that. The back right corners are is completely soaked. Like anything along to the, it's it's right. a mess. So yeah. people try and avoid that area. The only thing I will say, people do move the benches when it's hot. I have seen them lift a bench and move it into the shade. That's it. But that's not a winter time problem, is it? No, no. no. I'm just it's, you know. I just wanted to clarify. That's the only time oh, I have seen it. So, so Nancy, that's um, with everything moved out to the high part of the large dog area, then hopefully the, the muddy area will, um, you know, stay protected if that's the right yeah. part. Now, the other thing Chris suggested, Karen, and I don't know who is to maybe, um, with the camera there, can can we see where people are congregating? No, uh, it depends because if you think the if you think about the cameras, they're really primarily focused on the gates. So to, the answer is yes, depending upon yes or no, depending upon where they're actually standing. Uh, so if they're in and around or in the you know not too far off the gate, we can probably see them, but um, you don't you don't see the whole area. You know just just curiosity there, but. Yeah, I mean, we have the option as we discussed um, and, and planned for the future to add the other um, the other cameras in the locations we identified that would then provide full view of, the, of each area. 
I don't know if I want. No. Let's discuss that maybe. Yeah, but just you know, keep in mind, it's not that crystal clear. So <laughs> you can see if there's a body, but you know, it, it might be a stretch to tell if it was any one of you. All right, so all of us who will be out there, encourage, and, and again, the small dog people were moving where they needed to move. Large right. dog people, let's encourage that to happen. And, right. and then we can, you know, discuss improvements or maintenance once we get through the winter because, but the biggest thing is that we will, and Deb, you said it, if it needs to be closed, we close. Right? Kathy, um, Kathy, I know that you called for some volunteers and was that on uh, January 6th that you went out there and did what you did? And if so, I'd like to put that in the minutes and say who was there that helped out with that. Well, it, it ended up, it was, it was Denise, her husband, and I was out there and Chris and the whole crew. And, and <clears throat> what we ended up doing was just moving the benches away from the muddy areas to encourage people to sit right. where it's high and dry. Okay. And same with the, the water bowls and, um, and again, it stayed, it stayed closed for the rest of that week. Right. So Nancy, you haven't been out. Have you been out? I haven't. I got exposed to COVID, so I'm quarantining in my basement. Are so you okay? I'm fine. I'm not sick, Good. but I did get in contact with someone, so I haven't, and I won't be for like another 10 days. So, okay. all right. Well, so, stay, well, stay healthy. Stay. Thank you. Can I just ask, yeah. did the, is the drainage working in this, where the small dog park is right now? Are we seeing success with all that work that they put in? It is moving the, the water that it's supposed to be moving. But there's still issues. But there's, there's still, still there's going to be issues everywhere. Because yeah. Because of the yeah. weather that we've had. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah so uh, it, when we have a winter, that's a winter and it doesn't have to be snowing, but cold. And for we're a lot better off than when it's freezing for a week and then 70 for a week and then snows and then it's, 65 and melts and uh, and that's that's really what we were up against this time around and um, so it's 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 really just trying to all work together um, so that when we get to that that nice weather we we can start the spring with a nice and green and then you know happy and safe place for everybody to go and and as I said before we can have drainage everywhere but if we spend that much money, we, we, there are just spots in that dog park that are, there's a clay pan under it, which means, you know, there's, you know, it, it, the water has nowhere to go. Right. Um, and when it's, when you get the rain, then you get the snow, then you get the rain. It, it is what it is. So I, I would say 90% of dog parks and communities end up you know the fight goes he goes on the decision is made and the decision on the location is is almost always uh not on the most desirable land um and desirable being for whatever activity it, it could be rather other than a dog park dog parks don't usually see that so um it starts out where we're happy to get a dog park we do some other things we want some more things and when you get to drainage it's just an extremely expensive project and that's something we would have to determine if we either want to, even if we want to see what it looks like and, and see what the number is, that's the number, but it's going to be a big one. For the drainage, is that what you're saying? Yes, Chris Chris yeah. is very, very knowledgeable and we, do, we know that it would be a very, very large number. Would it make sense to look at the cost analysis, like what the numbers have been like the last you know, three to five years in terms of joining the dog park and continue. So new joins and then people who continue their, um, their membership. Cause I've heard some people love it. Other people like, I love Doylestown, but there isn't always the socialization there for my dog. So I have to sometimes have to yeah. go other places. So I'd it's, be curious what that looks like. Cause that would help determine where funding goes you know because you can see yeah. so but yeah. I, I, like i said yeah, I'm dog, 
huge dog component parks of dog tend park. to tr follow along the lines of say a fitness club I was just um, where, the same thing. where there's those yep. that join and never go and they keep rejoining and never go there's those that go multiple times a day um and and you know a lot of times when it's uh, people with you know it's not finding the socialization it's a lot of times it's it's people and their time frame ability so there's a lot of things that play into those um yeah there, I mean, we can always look at that for sure nance um i think it'd be helpful just I, to see because maybe yeah. there's a way for us to promote it especially yeah. since i think a million we talk about the operate the uh, all the um adoption yeah. events and people are, have adopted a ton of dogs over COVID. Yes, I mean, they have. Yeah. Yes, they have. And, there, and there's a lot of- a money um, perspective. But yeah, there's a, there's a lot that's behind that number too, that, you know, whether people people have their dog for a period of time, some people lose their, there's, a, there's, there's certainly, it's a number, but there's a lot behind the number that we may never know. And, and I, I mean, we could go back to, and Nancy, I think we kind mm -hmm. of talked about this as far as, you know, there was a, <laughs> When we opened, it was like, wow, it's the new thing. And then numbers went down, then numbers settled out, then people drop off, people rejoin. I would think if, if we saw a sudden drop and a continuous drop, it would be concerning. I don't know, I, I guess in, in promoting the dog park, I kind of think like this Fanny Chapman advertise or is it that that people know it's there and it's a word of mouth kind of thing so um i think I, there's a lot of people who don't know we have a dog park yeah and we need think, we could promote it more i just think from a supervisor perspective quantitative numbers help us and it mm -hmm. also says to me who was on the tab committee hey help us you know work with a kathy and i've talked mm -hmm. about it put something out there to help promote it. So, because it's a wonderful service, it's something I'm really proud of and I enjoy it and I love meeting people there and I love socializing my dog. So I just think, you know, I think it's a good thing. Right, I think that the most, the bigger number is, um, like Kathy said, and this happens with all, do all new dog parks, there's a big rush and then it will plateau and it's the maintaining of the plateau um, with with members falling off and new members coming in? Are we maintaining the plateau, growing a little bit, falling a little bit? I think that's the most important number. And, it, and then trying to grow it a little bit, whether it's with returns or news, because the, the, the falling off is all, all, all different reasons. But yeah, we can do think, all of that. I just think you provide all of them. They're just not, listen, you could be, in, you can interpret numbers a lot yeah. of different ways. I just think yeah. having the facts allows you to then make good choices moving forward. That's yeah. it. Yeah, it's we can, not, well, that's not, that's yeah, not that's hard it. to track. Yeah. Oh, and, and that can be part of when we do the recap as well. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, all right. right. Um, so we're all on board as far as closing. Um, where we understand why we're closing. Um, we know what we can do as members to support everything there so we're good with that all right orientations saturday the 16th at 9 15. can anybody else be there i'm looking right now um at what time 9 15. i should be able to make it i'm picking up a dog early but it's in my neighborhood, so I should be able to yeah, get there. You know, the building is not open yet, so this is still up in the air a little bit, but I think that it may be, so I would plan to move ahead accordingly. Unless you tell us no. Unless we tell you the building is not open to the public. Okay, and how about March 6th? You know, and it's funny, I, and I asked Susie about doing virtual training, and um, she's like, I am, and if we have to, we could do it. What do you all think? If, you know, I, I think you should plan for it. For only, and I'll only say one reason, people are anxious to get into the park. That's it. But go ahead, you got, everybody can decide. It's just my opinion. 
So you're saying that the um, January 16th orientation may not occur? Correct. And, and okay, so have people signed up for it? Uh, I got, you keep talking and I'll check and see what we got. Yes. Okay, I'm I'm, a, I'm, I'm with Nancy on this one. I'm on the opinion that, that we have to move, if we wanna maintain mm -hmm. new members, we have to move forward with a virtual platform for this training. And even though it's not ideal, um, I think I think you have to. But then you also have to take into consideration that right now, where we are weather-wise, we've got Ooh. we've got Camp Swampy. We don't have ground. We have Camp Swampy, and you to introduce brand new dogs in, in a swamp. I don't think is an optimal experience. Unless, of course, you got a Portuguese water dog or something. But, well, I, I, think, um, I think we have to talk about it. So if we get them through orientation and they want to sign up, they can. we can possibly say their registration or their membership will begin. We're having the orientation, but a membership will begin March 1st. It's still going to be a year, but whatever it is, there's always a way to find a resolve. Um, well, that, and but that, by not having orientation, we're not even moving forward. <laughs> The other, the other question, the other problem I see is when we have orientation in person, we have so many people already playing with their phone, not listening, not paying attention. We have it on Zoom and all you have to do is put up your poster face and you could be in the kitchen making crepes the whole time true. and nobody's going to know. Yeah, that's yeah, true. That's and I see that as a serious issue. I would think it that is a anyone, serious issue. Go ahead, Donna. I, was, I would think that anyone that's going to attend is going to pretty much pay attention. I mean, yes, we do have the small, I feel it's a small percentage of people <coughs> that don't pay attention during the orientation. But if, if, if they're going to get there, you know, virtually and attend it, I think they're basically going to pay right. attention. Right. I, I think the fact remains that as in all dog parks and any membership and any programs we do in all park and rec departments. Um, there's gonna be people that come through the system, come through the orientation that have their mind made up, they're gonna do what they want and they do. Uh, I still think that's the minority and they, they're the ones that rise to the top pretty quickly and then and potentially decide to move on that this isn't the place for them. But I still think the majority of our dogs with a little uh, peer leadership and reminding are still very good dog park members and um, so, so if, if I got, no, see, I'm just, if I got Susie, so I'm trying to think this through. So, so the power <laughs> could just go, but the idea that, that one of us, and the whole idea is with the new PowerPoint is that it doesn't have to be me standing up there it's anybody, but it's the idea that there's a human there watching them watch the PowerPoint. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's the the connection, and that that you can stop and say, you know, this is major importance, and this, you know, things like that. I, I'm Why just, wouldn't that work on Zoom? You'd have your leaders well, on Zoom, and then you'd have your PowerPoint, and the people wouldn't be in the room. But to Deb's point you don't know what they're doing. I'm, I'm listening to the meeting. I'm paying attention. I'm also still working on my computer. And, and we, you ask for people to be focused. And, and, and you ask how for many of you have, have sent a text message since we've been meeting? And if, I mean, I, you know, so I just, but, I just literally listened to a talk on PB on public radio from a neurologist who, who was saying, literally, he said, you think you're functional when you're multitasking. He says, and scientifically, it's been proven with brain scans, you're not functional. You're not getting the information. You're not really doing the right thing. You need to focus on one thing at a time to do it well and not waste your energy. So, so a quick workaround with something like that is, um, is have more of us engaged into that zoom meeting so for example if kathy would be running it or or kind of taking the lead someone like myself i can sit here and open up the chat bar and then you you constantly engage people through interactions right. with that chat so i could manage the whole chat 
situation <laughs> and say hey throw throw a right. um what's your dog's breed put it up in the chat just to kind of keep people engaged um my concern is that we're not being truthful that we're we're saying you can go to the dog park and we're going to have orientation and then we're not going to have it like i think we need to yeah i think that's a significant I, point it, i think that if if we're concerned about the winter weather, then why not we have the dog park um, open enrollment, for lack of better terms, be March through November. And maybe we don't have something like that, if, if that's such a major concern of ours. Um, obviously, kind of late to the party on that, but maybe something that- That's a good idea. Forward. That is a good, that's, that's, that's a very that's, good I idea. I think that's a great idea, frankly. Um, I, good, yeah. That's a good. very, very good idea um for for I, I think you just have to be i like that idea a lot i think you have to be mindful of we have an incredibly mild march or mild february you know but you could say i think maybe saying a range of time might be i don't know well the other thing but we i can like look what at you is, said a lot yeah. I, I think the other thing we can look at to that is if we're if we go to something like that where we start the enrollment in march we could then plan ahead and have two Saturday orientations or a weekday and a Saturday. We could have more than one orientation in the first month and make it more <laughs> available for everybody and plan on to do that and, you know, look ahead to that. Right. I think it's, I it's like patterning. That. I, it's, I do it's, like that idea and people can plan. I mean, that's the, the yeah. whole thing is they can plan Right. Yeah, uh, but I want to focus right now on I, I really that's a, a, a really good idea. Right. Um, but what are we going to do on the 16th? I mean, for so today, I mean, that's a week away. So it, what, there's a lot of things that can be done. And I think, you know, I want to back up because I, I don't think we want to be virtual all the time, but we are still in a pandemic. And, and this is this has happened. It's scheduled. We're still not we're not open to the public. There was some talk about it. We're not there yet. Maybe we will be. I'm, I'm guessing it's going up and down with this red and yellow and green. But um, those are things that are happening with the pandemic. And I know in other programs we've had to modify and we've had to come up with some virtual programming and across the board, people have they want to get back to real life, but they also like virtual programming. So it's 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 really what we don't have to like it, but what is the solution to make it happen? And if we have to do virtual and that helps us get through this, then then away we go. OK, and we could schedule. We I could schedule like if you guys I am and up for. And I, and I guess I don't know. I mean, like, do I sit here? Do I stand up? I mean, I can't talk and not walk around when I do the training. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of those. You're going to have to carry your technology with you so they and can I'm see like, you. Everybody's going to see my belly because I'm going to be standing up all the time. And that's you don't have one. one. Yes, <laughs> I don't have one. <laughs> I don't want to hear about that. <laughs> but can you share your a PowerPoint? Yeah. You can share your screen. You can share your screen. Share your screen. Yeah. We would have to, um, it would have to be set up through the township. And that, that's why I'm on Keith's, that's why I'm Keith Haas tonight. Um, I'm on the, the municipal authorities Zoom because there's another meeting so, and we couldn't run two at the same time. Um, so we'd have to set it up. And then, so that would just be the person turning it on, um, sending the, we don't make the log ones public so we could send it to the registrants. Um, but it's the message when the when the meeting starts. It's who's present. It's who's online. Not not the whole, you know, friends and family pass it down. You have to be online, paying attention to it. If the set criteria to it, there's we need people to pay attention. If you like, Nancy came in. Nancy, this is a great example. Nancy came in a little late tonight, and I could see her come into the waiting room and let her in. If it's after 10 minutes or after the initial uh, orientation, just like we do in live orientation, when you're late, you don't get you don't get brought in. Um, okay. So here's Karen, if you can find out, I would love for January 16th to be live. Okay. That, oh, yeah, I, I have no problem. I'm just waiting to find out the uh, exhale. March 6th, I would be happy to move forward 
virtual, but I want you guys to be guinea pigs at the next meeting. How about that? We could, okay. why don't we set up, uh, mm -hmm. is anybody opposed to setting up an alternate date from the meeting and, and doing a run through and with, with, with the I board? I can be a guinea pig for that. I, I, I can bring I three can others with me. Because we need to get, you need to talk to Susie, Kath, and see if we can get her on, on a date and then just do a, a, a run through. So, okay. But, I mean, I'm just available. I'll about this a too. month ago. Okay. And neither one of us wanted to do this. You know, we, we did talk about it and it's. Well, it's it, not, I don't, I think it's not about the one, it's about the medical scenario. It's about the public health scenario. If we can't open the building, we can't open the building. So we all want to do it that way. But the world is, I mean, we've all, how many meetings and programs and projects have we all been? I just went, you know, went to a virtual conference. Um, it's, it's really not about us. So, it's about so the like people I that said, want to take orientation. 2016, I think, um, is too soon. Although I, I can get in touch with Susie and see if, if she's willing to do, but I would, but March 6th, <laughs> I think would be a very good. March 6th. Uh, date to start virtual we could we can do okay. that and we can do it i know we can do it it's just sure we can. change is hard do and, you want to do you want to pick a date for a, a run through or do you want to do we need susie when well, we need susie to do the run through do you want to get back to everybody on that um sure i was just thinking we could do a 10 minute or sure you know, yeah it doesn't have to be long but we need the audience but, but couldn't we do it as part of a meeting. I mean, just do 10 minutes. Sure. No? What do you think? Should we do the whole thing? I would, probably, I would, I would be inclined to do a, a, a walkthrough because nobody's done it this way before a full. Okay, yeah. Um, Chris, just a quick question. If the building doesn't open in January, will that orientation then be canceled? What we would do is we would move them first to, let me see what's going on, uh, March 6th. There are seven signed up. There's 20 signed up for the 16th. We would, we would call them and ask them if they want to move to March 6th first. We wouldn't just, we would cancel it, but we would invite postponed. everyone to move. Postponed. So yeah, like, we're like five days away from the 16th. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's the Saturday. Yeah. I know, I guess I just get concerned that there's 20 people expecting to get their go ahead on Saturday. Well, they know that, well, everything and everything we do is pending. We have to move forward like life is going to go on, yeah. but we have to also okay. let it, we, you know, we tell everybody that we can't control the pandemic. So, um, but I would want to call them sooner than later. I can, I can call Sinclair tomorrow and see where we're at. Um, Nancy, have you heard anything? Honey, I have not. And I've been wondering myself. There was some chatter for, for uh, limited public with appointment and whatnot today. And when I called in, that did not happen because I'm, I'm working from home with the quarantine, um, not because of being exposed. Um, uh, but um, it did not happen. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, they opened the... Mm -mm. I heard numbers were low at the hospital, but... It, could it should have been over by now. So. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think it's just such a dance right now because nobody knows. It's you know that whatever wherever we are with the pandemic, and now that the more um, contagious version has landed in Pennsylvania, I, I think it's just day to day. Everybody's working now, just day to day, hoping we can get back to normal and then get the vaccines out. Um, and I think we're really caught in that bubble right now of the unknown. So, so Karen, if you <coughs> will first thing tomorrow, find out if we can have it in person on the 16th, mm -hmm. I will reach out to Susie because I'm thinking Susie doesn't even have the, her presentation, you know, it's, she comes to the township and uses it. So we would have to get that presentation to Susie. Um, Kristen, will you be my coach if I try dive in to do this on Saturday yeah. virtually? Yeah, absolutely. I can I can certainly be there to to help support that. Um, you know, if you have access to that presentation, um, you know, Susie doesn't need it. You can just screen share the whole time right. and you can go back and forth. 
in in speaking. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of workarounds. We we can absolutely make it happen, and I'd be happy to to help support that. Okay. Okay. Can I make a comment? Um, yeah. And I think Kristen I think Kristen alluded to this, but you were talking about like making sure people were engaged. Can't you do like pop up quizzes every so often where people have to actually answer a question? Um, I think I don't know what platform of Zoom you have, but I think you can set it up so that. I don't know, every 15 minutes, there's a question about something that was just covered and they have to answer it. The results come up right away. And so if people don't know the answer, you know to re to go over that, that section again. I think you can do these pop up. So and so pay attention. Right? Yeah, that way they have to pay <laughs> attention. And it's right. these pop up quizzes, which I think Kristen was even talking about with, you know, with the chat and show us a picture of your dog or something, but still, I think it's it's trying to keep them engaged. And if they know they have to answer a question, you have 20 people at the meeting. If you only get 16 answers, you know four people aren't engaged. But, but so then what though? And they don't get a certificate. They're not engaged, they don't get a certificate. You, you, can't, you can't make it more difficult than as if you were sitting there. I mean, right. right. Some people pay attention more than others. I think well, the, those four people are gonna be the ones that rise to the top at the park for breaking the rules. I mean, there's always, there's always a few. And you know, then 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 that's when I get the call that says so and so doesn't know whatever, and we call them up and they say, oh, I didn't know that, and we said, oh, look, we, I guess we must we we have to strengthen our orientation. Oh, maybe I wasn't paying attention. I get that all the time. <laughs> I'd like to just right. think that people are joining are joining for we're providing a service and they're joining for the right reasons. Right. And people it, do have a I do believe think yeah. people come in to do the right thing, and if they yeah. you know I have the if I do it wrong, shame on me. I made a mistake. I repeat it, right. then I'm right. And that's I, sort of the mindset. I'd like yeah, I I think you're absolutely right, Nancy. And there are, but there are also those that are that are there to buck the system. We know that we have eight years of experience with that, but it is absolutely the minority. I was gonna say, I could probably tell you by if if I had a memory and I could remember faces. <laughs> Those at orientation who are the ones who are 100% engaged and nodding their mm -hmm. head and looking Absolutely. and laughing at the right. And those- It, it might even be easier. I have to Zoom, walk over and stand by them, and this is the teacher in me, when they're playing with their phone. Um, it, so, you know, it's- yeah. You get it. But, you can do, but, can do. I, but we are five minutes past right. six. So what I would love to do is find out tomorrow if we can have it on Saturday. And You're right. And, and keep in mind, it, it may be, it's, it may, the answer may be, we don't know yet. But I think what we need to do is make a decision right now that whatever we find out tomorrow is if it's an if it's yes great if it's no or i don't know we should make the plan now to make the decision and so that we can provide right. people with adequate um, I, I think if it's no for this saturday we move those people to the march date and tell them it will be virtual yeah i i just think you're okay trying to rush people in four days when we don't even have something set right. up for it is asking right. for a lot of trouble Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. And Kathy, uh, you're going to let me know tomorrow or when you find out it, yes or no for Saturday. Yes. 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 Yeah, I, I agree. Trying to force something out virtual isn't realistic at no. all. No, but I don't. Yeah. We don't want to call them on Thursday or Friday and say, "Oh, by the way, I'd rather be do it do it in a positive manner and say we were really hopeful." And there's four days' notice, three days' notice, and make people feel good about it. And then said, "I know you're ready for tomorrow, but oh well." <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm sorry, I gotta, I gotta head out. I got a thing at 6 30. Yep. Okay. Yep. So thank, thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. We're all, we should all be heading out in just thank, a second. Um, Ka Kathy, will you be? Um, I will talk to Caitlin tomorrow. Oh, did I lose Kathy? Me? Yes. Oh, oh, right oh. The, the face has moved around. <laughs> Oh, so I see everybody, but they all flipped around. Um, the, uh, 
Um, I'm going to call uh, Caitlin tomorrow on staff. We'll find out what Sinclair says, and then I'll make arrangements for uh, uh, contact with you. With who? With me? With you, because Thursday, oh, you know what Thursday is, but. Okay. All right. I, I'm out of the, I'm out of the loop on Thursday and Friday. Okay. Um, just the sooner we know, the better. And and yeah. Kristen, I'm I am willing to dive into this, but I need a little boost of confidence and and also the know-how kind of because I've done meetings before, but I haven't done a presentation via Zoom before, and that to me is different and it. It may not be, but to me, it is right now. Okay. For sure, for sure. And I think if we just, um, I agree with everybody saying not to push it for this weekend. And if we if we do this a few times and run through it a few times, um, another good point, like, and I would be happy to be this person, would be kind of like the moderator of letting people in and all of that kind of crazy stuff that has to happen, muting people, unmuting people, and that so that, you can be in a position just to present because that you could do eyes closed, turn, uh, standing on your head. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. right. So, um, but oh, and if she did it that way, it would increase attention. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm, I'm definitely happy to, to support you on, on that aspect for, for sure. That's not a problem. Okay. Awesome. Good. All right. All right. Wow. This is totally new, but, but Hey, I'll get Susie on board too, because she'll understand. Too, so, okay. All right, um, that's it. Anything else? Nope. See, my heart is pounding. I mean, I'm thinking, I don't know how to do this, but I'll learn how to do it. I can, I, I, I can do that. I can. All right, all right. Anything else? Kathy, you need a walkthrough on how to set do a Zoom presentation. Is that what you really need? Is it the technical piece of it? Well, that's. Um, I, I've never done. Exactly. I've never done it. Okay. I'm going on to my tab meeting soon and I'll share with them. Um, we have a really, I've mentioned to you, uh, Jenya, I'll talk to her about that as well. Maybe there's some, we can, we can give you some tips or lessons and Aaron is new as well. That was just hired. So, okay. because we're all, we all need help and this is a service being provided. Okay. So, Thank you. All right. So let me, let me inquire. Awesome. Okay. All right. And let me know. Okay. Anything else, folks? We're 10 minutes over. Kathy is looking for a motion to adjourn the meeting, I think. <laughs> Second motion. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Meeting adjourned. It is. Wait, wait, wait. All right, Kath. Let me know. Wait, question. 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 Donna what? has a question. Andrew okay. motioned. I seconded. Okay. All right. Okay. And Hey guys, what? thank you. Bye. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Happy Bye. New Year. Bye. Yes. How do I get out?